Hey Facebook, Shay McAllister here. It is so windy, I don't even know if you can hear me. Um, comment if you guys just absolutely can and I won't even try. We are in Mayfield, Kentucky. We just got to the Mayfield factory where we're hunting. We're working inside as the storm hit last night. You can see right now, heavy machinery has been brought in. Trying to search for any sign of life, trying to search for survivors. It is absolutely devastating out here. Absolutely devastating. Oh good, it sounds like you guys can hear me, so I'm going to tell you what I know as much as I can here. Um, so, this is the perimeter of the factor, factory down here. What you're looking at is what is left of this factory. We're told it's a candle factory. And as bizarre as it, as it is, you, you can smell candles here. You, you can smell um, candles. It's really difficult sight here right now, you guys, because there are tons of family members here uh, desperately holding out hope that their family might be here. At the same time, when you look around, there are coroners from multiple surrounding counties because that is the reality. Last night's storm was that serious. right now how many survived and what I can tell you is 40 people have been accounted for here there was 110 people working here last night and when I say accounted for I mean accounted for not not necessarily alive or dead officials are still working hard to figure out what that number looks like what the reality is here so here's the scene Right here, you can see the yellow tape that we have to stay behind. The search is happening on the other side of this yellow tape. Now, for everything else that's happening here, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of volunteer groups, just like this one, stationed all around this property, just waiting for notice that they're allowed to come in. We actually just talked with this group you're looking at here. They told me that they're on standby. They are waiting for the um, first responders to remove rafters. And once they do, they'll be able to move in and search for signs of life in the debris. So that's this group that you're looking at right here. They work at Urgent Cares. They came also from Fancy Farm. Um, most of them that we've talked to have some sort of medical I talked to an army medic who showed up today to volunteer and they are all are just waiting for the call and waiting waiting to be told they can move in another thing for everyone in Louisville take a look back there do you recognize any of those vehicles PRP fire is here and so is Metro Louisville EMS we saw them as soon as we drove up we haven't talked to any of our hometown heroes right now um, because they're all inside working, searching. They're all inside searching, but you can see their vehicles are here, so we know they're here. And I have talked with the head of, of Louisville EMS, and um, he promises to connect with me here soon to give me an update. Back now to the search. I desperately wish I had more information for you guys right now. I just don't. I don't think anyone has that much information. Everyone's really busy just working, trying to get answers. The wind out here is so intense. You guys can probably hear it. But as horrible as 
this is to look at and it's not just here that's horrible to look at it is the entire town power lines and trees are everywhere we saw bicycles on the roofs of houses and windows busted out fences blown away rvs turned over it is um, devastating on every corner of mayfield right now but with that said there is when I was talking with the volunteers about what they were doing and what they were hoping to see and what they were waiting for, they told us they will stay here all night. They are not leaving until they know for sure that not one more person can be rescued. Earlier today, we were at a gas station and no one has water here. Um, there's no water in the town. But this gas station found a generator so they could open up so they could start giving people bottles of water from inside and drinks and giving people a warm place to step inside if they need it. Everybody in this town is just doing whatever they possibly can to help out. I think that's really beautiful. And that's something to be noted in this horrible, horrible tragedy. Guys, another scan here of what we're seeing. Okay, we're gonna walk back this way. This is away from the search site and more toward the site where all of the volunteers and family are gathered. And I'll show you guys a little bit of like who all is here. Uh, more PRP departments. It's wonderful. There's Livingston, EMS, Mayfield Fire, Mayfield Police. We're also seeing all over. Agencies from across Kentucky have moved in to help. They've brought their vehicles and their manpower. And that's really This way? Okay, we're being told we're gonna walk back this way. It's Farley, also on WHAS 11 team here. We're working together today to cover this and everything that's happened. I keep seeing a lot of people asking about um, volunteering and how they can help. And I've promised to find out answers for you guys and I just haven't yet, I'm so sorry. As soon as I do, I will, I'll let you know. I think we're gonna head back this way though. Farley, did they say go this way? Yes, Hudson. Hudson? Yeah, that building. Okay. Oh. I'm just gonna show them the side down here. We're seeing this all over. Street signs completely uprooted. The devastation here, truly like nothing I've ever seen before. I think nothing like a lot of people have seen. to give you guys one more sight of the search. They have asked us to move back. That could be for a lot of reasons, for our safety, for their safety, um, because they, they might possibly be bringing some, some people out of there. And so we want to make sure that we're doing exactly what law enforcement asks us to do.
had some pretty heartbreaking um, conversations today. You guys, I'm going to be honest with you. It has really been difficult. I was just talking to a young woman um, who seemed to be about my age who said she had last talked to her mom at nine o'clock last night when she was told to take shelter. She was working here at the factory and she has not talked to her since then. And she is here at the factory now. Um, we spent about half an hour together. She's obviously hoping for the best, hoping that to get some good news out of here. I also talked to a former employee of the factory. He quit two weeks ago, but um, came back today, hoping to get good news about his friends who were still working here. He says, out of the three that were working last night, he has been in touch with two of them that got out safe, and he hasn't yet heard from the third. But I think one thing that is um, a little reassuring is just how hard everybody is working here. If you take a look back, you can see half a dozen to a dozen uh, different pieces of heavy machinery working hard to lift and move those rafters and the heavy debris. And like I said, the one volunteer told me once they are able to get some gaps in there, they will be able to bring in volunteers who can search gently by hand for signs of life and, and really get in there and listen. And I know that that's what all of the volunteers are waiting for. Okay guys, we're gonna be heading back this way. I'm gonna take you with me. And then we'll do a little debrief when we get down. One more look at this sign. Stop sign. Hi there. for you. And I don't know if any of you guys could um, just hear us. We just ran into the owner of the plant who is understandably so, so upset, so shaken up. Um, and I asked her if there's anything we could do to help her and she said, just pray. So that's what we'll do. And um, anyone who feels like they'd like to do that at home, it sounds like that is the, the be very best way to help from home right now. down to show that truck down there, but I don't know if they would consider that kind of too close. Maybe should I just go to the road? Honestly, I think they were trying to get me away from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all are so sweet, but thank you for doing that. Y'all are good people, good hearts. There you see, looks like Chick-fil-A came out to just help feed people who are out here searching. And that's what I'm talking about when I say so many good people out here doing whatever they can to be of support, even if it's bringing a bag of chicken sandwiches. It's, we're seeing so much of that around here, seriously. This is the kind of image that is just blowing my mind. Look at these. This thick metal wrapped around this telephone pole like it's nothing. And this is what we saw all over when we were driving in today. I am so in the way, hold on guys. Let me get out of everybody's way here. Just look at that. Was I talking to you back here? Yeah. Have you guys heard anything? No, they are going to the... Uh... They're going to, they sent them back to the hospital and they put some more people in that trailer right there. That's where the bodies are being held right now. You okay. Yeah, you didn't know that. No. That's where they just put two more in there. We had, I'm actually, I'm on Facebook Live right now with yeah, people they, watching all over Kentucky. Is there anything you would want to say? Kind no, of? They're, um, they're asking us to go to. Are you okay if I show you? you? You're okay with that? Okay. They're asking us to go to the, back to the hospital to go with uh, my niece. Uh, my sister's mom and uh, her husband are going back to the nearest hospitals and, and we're going tracing ourselves backwards now. And it's your, your sister was working here last night, right? And actually, we might just do this. I, don't, I won't make you do it twice. Is that okay if we just yeah, get you here right. too? Let me make sure I guess. still have this on. All right, Facebook Live, you're kind of riding with us here. We're going to get a quick interview. Stay out of the way. Um, at least I hope we're staying out of the way. Okay. All right. We'll try to grab you real quick here. And you'll look at me. Okay. All right, so tell us your first and last name and it's, spell it for me. And I know you're here looking for your sister. Yes, ma'am, I am. When's the last time anyone talked to her? Uh, last night around 9, 9.30. Hey, going to, uh, as the storm, actually, as the storm was hitting and uh, while she was hurt, which is uh, her husband, Ivy. So, yeah, that's the last thing. And what did she say she was doing around that time? Uh, she just, I think, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get out of the way. Do you mind if we go right up here? We don't block anybody? No, it's just, it's just nonsense on... Nonsense on this nonsense, you know. We're standing here in the Ellen Scott's park, you know. Just, just aggravating to have to deal with stuff like that when you're when you're in distress and then. Uh, it's a hard day. It's, it's a hard day for everybody. But yeah. It affects you bad, you know. I'm saying, I'm saying. And like I said, I know the anger comes before grief, and I'll grieve on my, on my own time, but I don't want to be harassed when I'm actively looking for somebody. Of you know? course, of course. And know that our hearts are with you, Thank and you. and we're trying. We weren't we're here for you, so. Um, you were, you were telling us that she was seeking shelter. They were, they were beat. I don't know if she was seeking shelter, but she, I know she was on the phone and, uh, talking about the, that it was stormy mm -hmm. and, uh, whether or not, uh, the company has a, um, emergency alert mm -hmm. or any kind of system like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't work there. Okay. And, uh, and I know that he has been out here since, uh, 10 o'clock last night. And when did you get up here today? I got here, uh, I don't know, 8 o'clock, I don't know. Early this, Early this morning? Have you guys been told anything? Have you been given any information? No, other than to keep checking hospitals. That's all they keep telling us. And keep checking hospitals, and then uh, the last thing I got was uh, two more uh, victims uh, have been uh, 
found, pulled out, and uh, placed in a uh, secure area that they were uh, waiting for people to send pictures or give them pictures and they want to identify pi people by pictures because I don't know, most people didn't have identification or cell phones on them. So they're asking family members for pictures of their missing loved ones now? Yes. So did you guys hand over a picture of your yes. sister? You did? And I'm sure picture with the media. If, you know, maybe she got out last night, maybe she's confused or injured somewhere. So I, I, I gave a picture to the media. That way, if somebody said, hey, I don't know this lady, she looks injured or something like that. You know, I'd rather for her to be found by walking down the road and just, uh, you know, just uh, dazed or and confused. Of course. And uh, I, I don't want to have to make an identification on her. Of course, of course. So I know you said some of your family's heading to the hospital. Yes, they're heading back to the hospital. We've been back and forth, back and forth to every hospital that we've been driving distance. And uh, they said that no one was transported earlier because uh, by air because of the weather conditions. And, you know, you couldn't get a helicopter in the air. So then that means that you either had to be driven somewhere or drive yourself or something like that. So I know that she hasn't been flown anywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate you taking the time. Know that we're thinking about you. We're hoping so hard for you. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's just tough because uh, the grandkids, man, it's just uh, it's, it's going to be tough mm -hmm. if, uh, if the worst has happened. Of course. We're going to hold out hope for you here. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to hold out hope. Thank you. thank you for taking the time to do this. And we'll be around here if there's anything we can do to help you. Thank you. Let us know. Right. And for those of you who just joined us, maybe you can join us a little bit later. Family member, one of the employees from the factory who has not yet been found. send it to me too and I'll show it on here bad service I'll take a picture of her that's my nephew. That's her son. And that's her on the left. Um, you can go behind the. Yeah, we the might shade. need to get in the shade. Farley, are you able to take? Or yeah, I can. Or here, actually, this is great. This is gonna work. Do you want to do a video? And then let me show everybody on here. They were wanting to see it too. Here you go, guys. Here's his his sister. If you can see this. I'm sorry, I'm doing a terrible job. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, oh here, can you show it to her, to the camera as well? There's just a constant flow um, a constant flow of cars coming in and out and I see you guys I see your your request to find out how to help 
and I, I promise I'm working on it. I actually, the governor had, we've got some flying cables there. Okay. Uh, the governor had mentioned they were setting up a fund for Western Kentucky and I have reached out to them to get the exact name on it so I can tell you where you can donate if you would like to donate. All right, hold on guys, I'm multitasking. I'm trying to find out exactly where it is that you can donate. All right, I'm not seeing it, but I will. As soon as I do find it, I will let you guys know exactly how to help. So stand by and I'll update these comments as soon as I see it. I think for now, everybody, I'm gonna hop off of here and see if I can go find some more information. I'll come back as soon as I know anything else. Thank you guys for the support and um, for thinking about everybody here. What well, It's really a difficult day, but a lot of incredible people, a lot of a lot of hope still. So we'll hold on to that for now until we have any reason to do anything else. Oh, and there's another Louisville um, fire and rescue truck. So some of our hometown heroes also down here in Mayfield. 